Okay, chapter 22 of the 7th edition NASM Certified Personal Trainer textbook. And chapter 22 is on uh, introduction to exercise modalities. So basically uh, what NASM has decided to do in, in this chapter is to make you aware of, if, if you're not already aware of, um, aware of all the different types of training equipment and um, modalities that are available um, in the general fitness and wellness um, uh, uh, industry right now. So chapter 22, basically letting you know that if you're going to be a trainer, you ought to know the pros and cons of these different of these different ways of training and the different modalities and these different pieces of equipment. Um, again, if you're not familiar with the equipment, this chapter will definitely help you to understand the benefits, the pros and the cons of using them. If you are already familiar with them, and I'm sure, I'm sure most of uh, most of you are familiar already with, if not most of them, maybe even even all of them, whether you use them or not. Uh, the point is, is that that each of these each of these modalities of training have benefits and they have some issues that don't make them the best the best um, choice when it comes to training but they all do provide some type of benefit um, to your clients so um, an introduction to resistant training modalities remember paper writing implement when you are when you're going through any of these chapters create efficiency by reading it and then writing it right so that you uh, so that you can um, assist and develop your memorization of the material so you don't have to keep going back over and over um, to try and memorize it, right? Look at your learning objectives. Um, for the most part, it's a relatively short chapter. And the idea is once again, to get you familiarized with, you know, training equipment that you're probably going to see and use on a, on a regular basis. So um, uh, first and foremost, we have strength training machines. And there are some pros and cons to the strength training, and that's what you're getting in table uh, 22.1. One of the things you're going to notice in this chapter is a fair amount of review again um, on some of the terms and concepts that we've already spoken about in the previous chapters. So superset circuit training. And by the way, the whole point here of these exercise modalities is that some of them work really well within, the, within these other training systems that we've already spoken about. Um, for instance, supersets uh, for your chest really are, are really helpful. For instance, when you're in the when you're in that particular uh, phase phase two component of training, just as a for instance, and uh, doing dumbbell presses, for instance, supersetted with cable machines or supersetted with a a bench press machine. So machines, just as a for instance, right, can. Uh, can be really, really beneficial. Machines also have other uh, pros about them. Of course, there are some issues related to machines. And for the most part, whatever the pros and cons are, you can definitely work around the issues and benefit from, uh, from, the, from the pros that you, um, that you can see on these particular modalities. So here we are talking about core stability, planes of motion, right? This is review, so you can read through it if you're if you don't remember it, it's a good idea to go back and, and hit that subject again. But they're giving you a little bit of a review. So free weights, of course. So we have resistance machines, right? Everything from lat pull down machines to cable machines. All of those are are strength machines. And then we have free weights, barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells, and there's the obvious benefits. And again, think about what they've done: is they put that in a table for you, read through it for sure. But your goal, like anything else, is to get and start rewriting those tables. They've, they've coalesced all of that information and material for you. So cable machines um, are their own unique training modality. Cable machines have some great, great um, uh, pros to them. And then, of course, there are some issues that go along with it. But for the most part, in the real world, you're probably going to use most of these modalities, right? Um, and then use them selectively as needed. Um, you know, there's always this idea that, you know, free weights are best, right? I don't know if they are, but they definitely have a lot of benefits. But there's also issues with free weights, right? It's a risk-reward issue that was at the beginning of the chapter. 
Uh, another big modality that that is used quite often are elastic band resistance, right? Rubber bands is what we call them. So bands. Um, just make sure, just as a aside, make sure you get the ones that have the that have the protective um, sheathing over them, uh, because they, you know, if they snap, they can they can uh, cause cause some injury. So elastic resistance, of course, and there there's um, some great benefits to using to using bands. Obviously, if you look on page 734, there's a figure 22.8 of, of somebody doing squats using, normally I'm not going to do those, but you can do those with your clients. Uh, the point is, is that bands generally will not provide enough resistance, but they do provide significant resistance on other types of exercises. Now, um, NASM decided to put in a sort of esoteric piece of equipment that I don't uh, really see lots of folks using. However, it can be very effective for certain, for certain things. It's called the TRX RIP trainer. Um, basically, it's a, it's a, a long, uh, long piece of metal that you basically move back and forth and it applies um, a vibratory um, resistance, uh, anti-rotational, uh, exercise to it. And um, the idea is that because you are applying this resistance to this, to this piece of metal that has, has a pliability to it, bends back and forth, it forces your muscles to get into a fairly high level of tension um, for, for an extended period of time. So it could be, could be beneficial from that standpoint. Medicine balls, um, again, pros and cons, you're going to use them for specific things. And uh, for what we use them for, I don't know too many cons that go along with it, mostly pros, but you can use them, as you can see on page 736, many different ways that you can incorporate them into a workout. Great, great piece of equipment. Uh, the next one will be kettlebell training. I would say that after machines and cables, resistance with free weights, dumbbells, barbells, now you got kettlebells. Kettlebells are basically free weights but the difference with the kettlebell is the is the position of the handle in relation to where the resistance is. So your handle and your um, your biomechanics are going to be a little bit different. And so there are lots of benefits to kettlebell training, and there is a list of them there for you. In fact, there's kettlebell uh, program design strategies. You can take entire uh, certifications and classes just on using. Kettlebells, great, great piece of equipment. Um, there is body weight training, right? Sometimes we forget that uh, that is a modality of training and it's used um, normally quite a bit within a training program to ensure that there's significant or sufficient endurance training. Just as a, for instance, the beauty of say push-ups is that even if you can't do them in the standard way, you can go down to your knees and essentially reduce the resistance and be able to continue with the movement. Suspended body weight training. And so again, pros and cons of suspended body weight training. Normally we use the, the um, TRX for this. So the TRX uh, piece of equipment that we're talking about is, is completely different, but the TRX band or strap system is basically, um, basically a system, two straps attached up to a wall or bar, um, normally up above that allows for uh, this suspended um, resistance type of training. If you haven't seen them, um, they are uh, produced by a company called TRX, but of course there are other companies that, that make, their, make their own brand. So we don't just call them TRX, we call it band training. And so you can see the, the many different, many different ways that you can use uh, pretty much for every single muscle group you can find an exercise to do on the bands. Um, then there are the sandbags. <clears throat> so sandbags, again, provide the pros of the sandbag is that they provide resistance, um, but it's not in a, it's not a bar. So there's some movement to it and makes it a little bit, um, a little bit more challenging to move the weight. But again, we are seeing their, their usage more and more. Once again, um, if you don't use them, that's what they're designed for. Um, the VIPR um, is another similar to the sandbag, except this is an actual solid, um, solid um, piece of, piece of um, apparatus. 
that you can use. And again, uh, NASM is giving you sort of an insight into some of the pieces of equipment or the modalities that are being used. Again, we're not saying that you use these with your clients. They're just giving you, they're just giving you a little, little insight into, into these different, different um, modalities. Then there's battle ropes, great cardiovascular training with battle ropes. Um, we use them quite often in many different, many different, um, um, many different ways to, to train uh, before workout. You can do them as a warm up. You can do them as a, you know, as a warm down. Of course, you wouldn't be doing it with high intensity. Um, you can do them in between specific exercises that you're doing. Um, and uh, that's a great, great piece of equipment. And there's, there's, again, there's pros and cons to using the battle ropes, many different ways to incorporate them into a workout. We see it being used for abdominal training, core training, as well as just as a, a piece of cardiovascular training apparatus used in conjunction with, you know, a, a stationary bike or whatever the case is. And then there are proprioceptive modalities, and this would be the stability ball and all of the pieces of equipment that are similar in that respect. So, um, not so much to worry about the table 22.3, but when you look at table 22.4, this gives you a little bit of guideline on the safety. Not a bad idea to read, to read through that. One of the things to keep in mind is that the stability ball itself needs to be properly inflated. You can make changes to the inflation level and that will have different effects on the proprioceptive, um, proprioceptive richness of the environment. The more um, the more you blow it up so that it becomes more and more uh, rigid, the more challenging it is to use as a piece of apparatus. So it can be used as a bench. It can be used to lie forward on. You can do uh, planks on it. There's, um, there's a number of, number of really great exercises you can use with the stability ball. And then, of course, we have um, what came after the stability ball, which is the BOSU, B-O-S-U. A BOSU ball, the half dome, so to speak. And uh, quite honestly, you like to use this and use this way more often than even the stability ball um, for a lot of different exercises. The BOSU ball um, allows you to train with the dome side up so that you can develop ankle strength, right? Um, and then you can turn it on its um, dome side down and you can stand on it, or as you see in figure 22, um, 30, you can do push-ups on it, use it as a destabilized, right? Destabilized, but controllable platform to do, for instance, push-ups on. Um, the TerraCore, again, these are, these are equipment, these are pieces of equipment that simply, um, simply allow you to increase the overall intensity or proprioceptive uh, richness of the environment. NASM now goes into some of the technological um, modalities, those, um, those pieces of equipment that actually help you to assess and track your training. So in this case, trackers, fitness trackers like Fitbit, um, generally what they're doing is they're monitoring your heart rate, things like that, calorie counters, right? And you can, you can look through that um, to get an idea of exactly what they do. Um, there are a lot of benefits to it, helps with motivation, accountability, um, the problem is with accuracy for like the Fitbit, just as a, for instance, and some of these other, some of these other, um, uh, pieces of equipment, sometimes as they're really not as accurate as they can be. I will say this, uh, we're back to, uh, the idea that if you're going to use a heart rate, um, uh, monitor, get one that actually straps around the chest. Um, you can either use the, the one where you can see it on your wrist or like I do is I have a, uh, I have my phone, I have it on my phone so I can actually have an app so I can actually see, um, see what's happening with my heart rate on my phone app and I can put it over, I can watch it. Again, any number of different ways that technology is out there. Fitness and nutrition apps themselves, and of course there are any number of, of apps that will allow you to um, look at uh, record, monitor, and assess your nutritional intake. These things are really, really critical, really important, especially when your clients are trying to um, develop habits and learn how to eat properly. Uh, those are great, great tools to have. 
fitness apps themselves, heart rate monitors. So there we are with the heart rate monitor, as I, I you know, sort of spoke about it earlier on. It actually, in one sense, in my opinion, is actually the, one of the most important pieces of equipment from a fitness perspective because it it gives you the main that main training uh, variable that you need to see when you're doing your cardio training, which is your heart rate. So that's what, uh, particularly the ones with the straps. Again, I think this one is a Polar. Probably um, Polar was like the first company to come out with heart rate monitors, but there's a number of really good quality products out there. So, you know, chapter 22, not so much that you would see a whole lot of this on a, on a test, but the information in here is really, really good. And it, it kind of makes you aware of all the different modalities. And those are not all of the modalities that are out there. There are other, you know, very specific type of training, training modalities um, that, are, that are used in health clubs and gyms and personal training studios that you can, that you can use as well. Um, but in this particular chapter, it's opened up, hopefully it's opened up a kind of another world for you if you weren't familiar with these pieces of equipment. So that is chapter 22, go through your summary of course, your chapter review and then your, and then your uh, highlights. And that's chapter 22, you're done with that. And um, I will see you on the last chapter in this textbook, which is chapter 23.